just chilling. One of my favorite quotes is, work is not your entire life, it's just part of your life. It's a very simple quote, but it's a wonderful reminder. I think all too often we subject ourselves to working these long, crazy hours for performance metrics or out of obligation. I mean, there's a whole bunch of reasons why, but that doesn't mean it's right. Listen, if you enjoy working like a dog, then pop off. If that's your thing, then let it be your thing. But if you're kind of like me, where we're kind of like, cozy girl still hustlers like we still get our back don't doubt that but we're the type of people where we show up we do what we got to do we do it well and we go home and we have our personal life don't call me on my day off hey there my name is stefania welcome back to my channel we're on a bit of a cozy vibe today excuse the air dried hair excuse my pacific northwest sweatshirt that i really do love so much some days you just don't feel like doing a full glam some days you just want to be in your sweatpants with a blankie and a cup of coffee and there's nothing wrong with that and i can chill like this because i learned how to set boundaries with work have you if you clicked on this video today I'm gonna assume one of two things one you are sick and tired of your coffee shop not respecting your boundaries or two you just started at a coffee shop and you want to be proactive about it which I commend you for that if you have already started and you're wanting to learn how to set boundaries at work well you and me were the same when I started at Starbucks nobody warned me I kind of had to figure everything out for myself I am somebody who believes in a work-life balance I do not believe that we as human beings were put on this earth to work I believe personally that I was put on this earth to frolic and make lattes here and there and create beautiful things. And you probably were too. I don't know who decided this whole like working 40 hours a week thing, but weird. Today, we are going to talk about the elephant in the room, which is setting boundaries with your coffee shops. More specifically, setting boundaries at Starbucks. Today, I'm gonna specifically focus on Starbucks, but what I'm about to say actually applies to all coffee shops and really most jobs in general. We can apply these principles anywhere. In this video today, we will talk about why you want to establish good boundaries in the first place. Like right off the bat. Then we'll talk about what setting boundaries looks like. We'll go through a few scenarios. We'll get you prepped. And lastly, we'll talk about what to do and what to say if, when your boundaries are crossed or somebody pushes back on them. You are not a house of cards. You are a concrete castle. Do not let anybody push you into a decision that you do not want to make. If you're a new barista, seasoned barista, coffee loving, healing baddie, you're gonna wanna stay a while. Around here, we talk about all things coffee, barista life, healing, thriving, prospering, basically just being a bad bitty with a latte in our hand. If that sounds like your vibe, then subscribe to me, like this video, and turn on notifications so that we can do this more often. My creative juices have just been flowing recently, probably because of all the boundaries I've been setting. Eh. Establishing boundaries can be very daunting at first. I realize that there are a lot of people pleasers among us, and that's nothing to be ashamed about because I used to be a people pleaser too, like pretty bad in the past. I know when it comes to work, we want to succeed we want to feel that sense of accomplishment we want to perform well and there's nothing wrong with that but I do think that coffee shops like Starbucks definitely take advantage of that it's no secret that coffee shops are pretty busy it doesn't matter what Starbucks you work at what location wherever you go Starbucks is just busy period ma'am could you like not hit my tripod look at her look at this guilty face my old manager used to say all the time that baristas are some of the most unreliable people which I don't know if I fully agree with that but I do think that there's probably some truth to it because yes there are baristas that are unreliable there are baristas sprinkled in almost every coffee shop that call off no call no show some people just flat out quit dude but when you work at a high volume store somebody calling off is detrimental to the entire workflow and more often than not it sets the entire team behind because now the people on your team are doing the job of two people and when it gets crazy busy and you're juggling that like it's the type of shift that you go and you cry in your car for an hour after in the event that somebody calls off, your shift manager will typically start ring-a-ding-ding in people who are not scheduled that day. Or they will ring people who are scheduled later on or left already. They'll start asking people to come in, come in early, come in again, literally. Here's what I've learned though. The person who says yes the most is usually the first call. And if you're a people pleaser, you will typically say yes to that call, even if you don't want to. Maybe you're somebody who's empathetic and you're thinking about the people on your crew and you're like, oh my goodness, like they're swamped, like I should go in and help, yada, yada, yada. No, here's the reality of it. The issue is not you going in and covering a no call, no show. Your job is to enjoy your day off. It's the store's job to staff the store correctly. I think that everybody who works at Starbucks can probably agree that Starbucks does a pretty poor job of staffing their local 
locations correctly. To the point that if one person calls off, it's like a sinking ship the rest of the day. That's not how it should be. There should be some sort of buffer built in and more often than not, there just isn't. In my opinion, I don't think it's fair to call people on their day off and ask them to come in. I don't think it's fair to ask people to come in and cover management's lack of planning. I thought I was too far gone, but alas, I bounced back. I dug myself out of the trenches. Setting those boundaries took a moment to settle in, but the second that they marinated, I was a better person because of it. AKA, I didn't want to throw my phone out the window of a moving car every time I saw Starbucks ringing me on my day off, which was always, by the way. Setting boundaries is important because you're protecting your personal life. If you even care an ounce about your loved ones, your friends, your family, your personal time, your you time, then set those boundaries. I've never thought it was fair for like these huge companies to be just like snatching time away from our loved ones like that in the name of business. So Stefania, how might I go about this? Well, I am so glad you asked, love bug. Now, if you're just starting out, then I urge you to set those boundaries immediately, right off the bat. Do not hesitate, do not bend them for anybody unless you want to. Now, if you're like me and you're already six feet under, if you've already been the yes girl for some time and now you're trying to backtrack a little bit, just know that yeah, it is possible to dig your way out of the trenches. I'm a living example, but let me help you. Here's what that's gonna look like. The word that I'm about to say to you is so powerful and not a lot of people know how powerful it is not a whole lot of people use it this will solve all of your problems seriously are you ready no that's it that's the word may i remind you really quickly that you do have free will if you have lunch with your grandma an hour after your shift and your manager comes and asks you to stay an extra three hours because somebody no call no showed again like you have the power to say no if you don't want to come in on your day off because becky called off for the 14th time then you don't have to you are not a bad person for saying no you are not selfish for saying no it makes you a human with a personal life that you prioritize and value i don't know who made us feel bad about that but that's not right. I need you to start getting comfortable with saying no when work calls. I need you to start getting comfortable with honestly not even picking up in the first place. I know it's especially tough when you feel empathy for your team or maybe you even really enjoy the place you work, the people you work with. I know it's tough to hear that they're struggling, but if you value your personal time, your family time, your you time, can't let work get in the way of that. And honestly, rest is just as productive as anything else. Even if you're just chilling on your couch, you don't have to feel bad about saying no. Now it's a lot easier when the store is calling you, right? Because I mean, you don't have to pick up. But what about when you're right in front of them? What about when they corner you in the back room? When they ask you to stay later or pick up an extra shift and you're like in the back room up against the, the refresher concentrates and you're like, ah! Those are the moments you gotta have a backbone, honey. I, I, I don't know what to tell you here. Even if you gotta fake it till you make it, you gotta have a backbone and here's why. If you don't take control of your time and your energy, somebody else will. If your manager hits you with the, hey, can you stay a little later today? And you hit them with the, yeah, like uh, how much later exactly? And they hit you with the, uh, you know, just a just couple of hours, nothing, no big deal. Or some other amount of time and you just simply don't want to respond with, unfortunately, I cannot do that today. You could just simply respond with, I can't today. I'm sorry. You don't need to give an explanation. You don't. It's your life. You don't need to explain that. You are unavailable to stay later. You are unavailable for that extra shift. And if they keep pressuring you, just simply walk away. Remove yourself physically from the situation. If they hit me with an extra shift or uh, coming in early or something like that and I was unsure about it, I just let them know like, hey, I will let you know an answer to that before the end of the day. I wouldn't say yes impulsively anymore because I learned that when I said yes impulsively, usually ended up backfiring on me and now I had this shift on my hands that I've already committed to and there's nothing I can do about it. I think we as humans sometimes kind of put this like pressure and this stress on ourselves. Like, oh my God, like we have to have a reason. We have to have an entirely laid out lie as to why I can't come in that day. Like, but baby, you do not. It is not that deep. It's just coffee. Now, what is that deep is losing out on time with our loved ones and personal time. That's time that we don't get back. Stop over explaining, say no, say you can't, say you're unavailable and keep it moving. It's really that simple. It's you who's making it more difficult than it needs to be. Mwah. Now, how about in an instance where somebody kind of pushes back on your boundaries and like crosses the line a little bit, like gets a little like too in your face about it. Cause I'm gonna be honest with you, that might happen from time to time and Speaking from experience. Fear not though, I'm here to prep you my little espresso beans. In the event that your manager pushes back on the no, I have another commitment, no, I'm unavailable that day, and tries to guilt trip you, these are the moments where you need to stay firm. You need to sit up straight, 
stand up straight, put your shoulders back, and stay firm. This may come in the form of, well, we, we really are short-staffed, we could really use you today, or, or my favorite, it would just be for like an hour or two, could you just come by, like we're really struggling. I've heard them all, and you know what? It may even be genuine, but if that's not what you wanna do, if the request is not what you want, then don't do it. If when this sort of thing happens, all you need to do is respond with, I do apologize that this is happening, I wish I could make it in, but unfortunately I am unavailable today. Done, it does not need to go any further than that, and if the guilt tripping and the manipulation persists, simply hang up the phone or remove yourself physically from the situation. Also, I just wanna throw this little tidbit in there for some people that feel comfortable doing this. If your manager is asking you to pick up an extra shift, you do have leverage. You could use that as like a point of negotiation. I have done that before where I'm like, all right, you want me to work a Tuesday? I don't wanna work Saturday then. Find somebody to cover my Saturday and I'll cover the Tuesday. The word no works just fine too, works great. Stay firm in your boundaries. It is not a boundary if you don't adhere to it. At, at that point, it's just, empty words if it's not something that you can uphold to yourself. It's gonna be hard at first, it's gonna feel uncomfortable, I will not deny that. But you'll be so glad that you did it because I can promise you that nobody in their final days looks back and goes, man, I wish I would've worked more, I wish I would've picked up that shift. No, they're looking back and thinking, I wish I would've spent more time with my family. It's just coffee, it really isn't that deep. We're not placed on this earth to work, we are placed on this earth to just like, I don't know, frolic, walk on the beach, have a smoothie. You're stronger than that. Concrete castle, not a house of cards. If you would like to chat about more things, coffee, barista, healing, thriving, prospering, I'll link some more videos on the screen for you to jump to next. But thank you for watching, and I hope that we can do this more often. Mwah. Good luck. Set those boundaries.